Madam Deputy Mayor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second Bally Easton. We are especially delighted to welcome Bally Clare Male Choir and the Clare Chorale on their 90th and 20th anniversaries respectively. Albert McLenahan was appointed here in Second Valley Easton in 1933 and served as presenter until 1960. The Reverend James Coulter, a minister here at this time, was very interested in music and was an enthusiastic supporter, member and chairman of Ballyclare and District Male Voice Choir. It was through his initiative, in partnership with Albert McLenahan, Sam Stewart and his brother WJ, that the Male Voice Choir was established in 1933. There is more information on the two choirs in your order of service. Now this window on my left, your right, have flowers on it this evening. It, the window was given in memory of Albert McLenachan, donated by his family and choir members. We are glad to have everyone here tonight joining us in evening worship and are especially looking forward to hearing from the choirs. So our thanks to Sheila Greer, Darren Day and the choirs for being with us. Tonight's offering will be in aid of Second Valley Easton's Ministry of Music in recognition of the legacy of Albert McLenahan for the preservation of our Allen organ and the ongoing development of music in the future. Everyone is invited to the hall after the service for supper and we thank those involved in the provision and preparation of this and indeed we thank all of those participating in any way in tonight's service. Looking forward, evening worship here in Second Valley Easton on Sunday the 16th of April at 7pm will be our annual service for the rural and farming community. Special music will be provided by the Farmers Choir. All are most welcome. The service will now proceed unannounced. Oh, 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 oh,
Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. As God's people gather together, let us worship God. Let us pray. Creator God, you hear us. Our words in prayer, our silent thoughts and pleas, and each note or melody we sing and play. May our praise today connect with heaven and unite our hearts with the sound of eternity. Lord, may the gifts of our voices and melodies of our music move with the work of your Spirit. May we bring light into dark places, restore hope and vision to all who are oppressed, and well-being and health to all those who suffer. Today, Lord, we give you our worship. May it be a time for you, Lord God, to touch our lives afresh and renew your church. In Jesus' name, who taught us to ever pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Proverbs 9. Wisdom has built her house, she has set up its seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servants, and she calls from the highest point of the city. Let all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, come, eat my food and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and you will live. Walk in the way of insight. Whoever corrects a mocker invites insults. Whoever rebukes the wicked incurs abuse. 
Do not rebuke mockers, or they will hate you. Rebuke the wise, and they will love you. Instruct the wise, and they will be wiser still. Teach the righteous, and they will add to their learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For through wisdom your days will be many, and years will be added to your life. If you are wise, your wisdom will reward you. If you are a mocker, you alone will suffer. Folly is an unruly woman. She is simple and knows nothing. She sits at the door of her house on a seat at the highest point of the city, calling out to those who pass by, who go straight on their way. Let all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, stolen water is sweet, food eaten in secret is delicious. But little do they know that the dead are there, that her guests are deep in the realm of the dead. Just one that flows. 
fellowship here with my Lord can be so inexpressibly sweet. Oh, what will it be when his face we see, when round his bright throne we meet, when round his bright throne we meet? Oh, it is wonderful, it is marvelous and wonderful what Jesus has done for this soul of mine. The half has never been told, been told. Wonderful, it's wonderful, it's marvelous and wonderful. What Jesus has done for his soul of mine. The from the 4th century sermon preached by St. Augustine. Let us sing to the Lord a song of love. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise is in the assembly of the saints. We are urged to sing a new song to the Lord as those who have learned a new song. A song is a thing of joy. More profoundly, it is a thing of love. Anyone, therefore, who has learned to love the new life has learned to sing a new song, and the new song reminds us of our new life. The new person, the new song, the new covenant all belong to the one kingdom of God, and so the renewed will sing a new song and will belong to the new covenant. Listen to the Apostle John. We love him because he first loved us. The source of our love for God can only be found in the fact that God loved us first. He has given us himself as the object of our love, and he has also given us its source. What this source is, you may learn more clearly from the Apostle Paul, who tells us, the love of God has been poured into our hearts. 
This love is not something we generate ourselves. It comes to us through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. My dear friends, fruit of the true faith, holy seed of heaven, all you who have been born again in Christ and whose life is from above, listen to me, or rather, listen to the Holy Spirit saying through me, sing to the Lord a new song. Look, you tell me, I am singing. Yes, indeed, you are singing. You are singing clearly. I can hear you. But make sure that your life does not contradict your words. Sing with your voices, your hearts, your lips, and your lives. Sing to the Lord a new song. Now it is your unquestioned desire to sing of him whom you love. But you ask me how to sing his praises. You have heard the words, sing to the Lord a new song, and you wish to know what praises to sing. The answer is, his praise is in the assembly of the saints. It is in the singers themselves. If you desire to praise him, then live what you express. Live good lives, and you yourselves will be his praise. Thanks be to God. A prayer of confession. Let us pray. Lord God, we're in awe that Scripture proclaims that you rejoice over us with gladness, that you calm us with your love, and that you rejoice over us with singing. Forgive us when our melodies play a discord in the harmonies of your kingdom. Forgive us when we have been so out of tune with the needs of others and mute when we should have yelled for justice. You have destined your creation for joy, that your people should go out in joy and be led forth in peace, that the mountains and hills should burst into song before you and all the trees of the fields applaud. Help us to relearn the rhythms of your love and find our place in the chorus of your people. May your spirit give voice to all that brings life, that we would proclaim your glory in learning to live in harmony with one another to your eternal glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Sing us, Lord, sing us, Lord. We are not worthy, but we long for your love. Let me know your Christ, Lord, Lord, is going to walk into the kingdom of God.
Madam Deputy Mayor, there are a lot of challenges facing politicians these days. And there's some perhaps people wouldn't want to take on. But I'm not talking about the Northern Ireland Protocol. I'm talking about trying to coordinate two choirs in one night. It's like herding cats. Sheila, you're a star. Thank you. I've been involved with music and with choirs myself for decades, right back to school days, and singing. And it still continues, not just here in church, but sometimes in our nursing homes and residential homes around the area. There's one that I've regularly been through, into through the years, and sometimes the quality of the singing is there's a lot of people who are able to sing, other times not so many. There was one time in a local nursing home when I was there conducting the service that not anyone was able to sing. It was just me, a choir of one, with the uh, pianist playing for me that day. And after the first hymn that we sang, at the end of it, one of the residents loudly exclaimed, well, that was just awful. <laughs> <clears throat> but regardless of the quality of the music, or indeed the singer. In all the different places of worship that I have attended through the years, from grand cathedrals, or local congregations, or hospital services, or to villagers gathered under a tree in Transylvania, or down in South America, or indeed even in South Africa, or a youth group in a hall, music has been central. It's a thread that runs through all our denominations and links our service here this evening to worship services across the globe today. Yet why sing? Why bother? What's the point of music in our services? Why do we gather each week to sing and make music when we could as easily sit at home? Why do we even gather to worship, to sing and make music from your heart to the Lord? Oh yes, Studies show us that music's good for your psychological well-being. It can buoy your mood and fend off depression. We're told it can help re relieve stress and all these kind of things. There's power in music for our well-being. But in our reading from Ephesians today, we hear that we should be communities shaped by singing and making melody to the Lord in our hearts. The big tech companies have developed playlists. So my phone through the week likes to suggest a playlist to me every day. On Monday, it's got a get up and go list. And on Friday, it has a dance party mix. I don't think my phone knows what Presbyterian ministers do. <laughs> but music is a very personal pursuit. And if that's the way music is shaped in our society today, we might end up thinking about music as just that, a personal thing. That music is really just another piece of armor in our self-help mechanisms that we have. Sing hymns to cheer yourself up. It's a rainy day outside, but a good song will put a smile on your lips. It's been an awful week. The news is depressing. Okay, choose something jolly. So sing and make music. Yet, the epistle that we read tonight is saying something very different. A choice is being made. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children and walk in the way of love is how Ephesians 5 begins. And that refrain from the teaching of Jesus to love God and love your neighbor is to be put into practice. And how do you do that as a community? The epistle in general is written to a group of people who are living in a world at the time that is riven with division. Division between male and female, Jew and Gentile, poor and rich. And this congregation feels poorly resourced to know how to respond. But we face the same questions in our age. Because if God has really called us to live in a way, shown to us in Jesus, that challenges the harmful divisions of our world, what things do we need to do to carry out that mission? You might not know, but these two readings that we had tonight from Ephesians and that ancient text of wisdom are always linked together in church calendars read throughout the lectionary. In Proverbs 9, where wisdom personified calls out to all who are simple to come join her. 
lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of the insight. You might not have noticed, but Ephesians echoes the call of wisdom. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise. Music isn't simply about your well-being. To sing is to make a choice. Eurovision's coming up. Do you love it? Are you one of the kind of people who be having a Eurovision party? Or are you someone who pulls the curtains and burns the TV? <laughs> the mad costumes, the sometimes madder songs. But what if you're broadcasting from a bunker when your country is being invaded? Timur Miroshchenko broadcasting from Ukraine as Russian forces were bombing the country. Even a silly song became a choice. Because to sing and make music is an act of defiance. Father Maximilian Kolbe was a Polish Franciscan friar who was sent to Auschwitz for hiding Jews during the Second World War. And there he continued to minister to others. And it was said that the guards singled him out repeatedly for cruel and terrible beatings. In 1941, in July, three prisoners appeared to have escaped from the camp. And as a result, the deputy commander of Auschwitz ordered 10 men to be chosen to be starved to death. It is recorded that when one of the men was selected, heard he was, he cried out, my wife, my children. And at this point, Colby volunteered to take his place. The commander allowed Colby to go in the man's place and they were put into a bunker. It was terrible. And for days the men suffered terribly. But throughout it, as other prisoners recorded, the sound of singing rose up. To sing and make music is an act of defiance to those who would silence you. In a world of evil and fear and selfishness, to give thanks and praise is to refuse to allow those things to define us. When Albert McLenaghan began the choir all those years ago, he was not just producing a group to sing, he was producing also community. For music, not as just defiance, but it also builds things. It builds community. And through the years, how many times have you as choirs or others been involved with music? How many times have you seen where choirs and music draw us together? And also through the decades that I have sat with families in times of grief. And we have gathered in our churches to give thanks for their life and funeral services. What do we do? We sing because sometimes your song may well be a lament. But we sing because we make a choice to refuse to allow death to define those who we have loved and cherished, to allow death to silence us. And so we give voice to melodies even when our hearts are breaking. We sing and make music for it cheats death of its power to silence us. We talk about a closing hymn sometimes in church, and that's just a load of nonsense. There's no such thing. It's a beginning, not a closing. An opening hymn of hope for the world. Sing, sing loudly, and may God grant us all abundant voice. Amen. A prayer of dedication and for others. Let's pray. God, as we have offered the sacrifice of our time, talents, and money this evening, we ask that you bless us in our giving that we may become a blessing to others. We remember those places where praise has fallen silent due to the cruelty of others. Especially remember our sisters and brothers across the world where conflict has robbed them of joy. We remember Ukraine and Sudan and Syria. We remember those places where your people are forbidden to praise your name, Afghanistan, North Korea, Somalia, Libya, and Yemen, and ask that your people find safety and security to gather in peace. 
as we have worshipped together. We give thanks for all those whose music has inspired us in our faith and service through the years. Bless all those who teach and encourage others to develop their musical talents. Bless all those who help others to find their voice. Bless all those choirs whose praise builds a community of welcome and acceptance. Bless all those whose generosity will help those in generations to come to praise your name. By your spirit, teach us all a new song. For our world is too often tuneless and uninspired. That all the earth may praise your name for the hope given to us in Jesus Christ. And that together we may sing of your salvation and declare your glory among the nation, now and always. Amen. Thanks to God for food and for fellowship and the company and worship of tonight. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of you now and always. And all God's people said, Amen. I invite you to sit for the Vesper. Amen.